Hello and welcome to Nationwide. I'm Amina Saidu Abu Bakr. The Nigerian Meteorological Agency has predicted the likelihood of dust haze nationwide. Nimitz Weather Outlook release on Friday in Abuja predicted the prevalence of dust haze across various regions of the country. The agency attributed this to a high concentration of dust in the atmosphere. It added that horizontal visibilities will range between 2 kilometers and 5 kilometers in most areas. Few locations within northern region may, however, encounter poorer visibility. Nimitz advised individuals to be mindful of the weather conditions and take necessary precautions to mitigate any potential health risk associated with the prevalent dust haze. Governor Keleng Mutwang has made a strong appeal to all northern leaders at all levels to sort out their differences, drop all forms of sentiment and come to the table in the spirit of unity and togetherness to rediscover the north and advance the cause of its people. He made the clear while receiving the Northern Senators Forum in Jos. Grace Akwegwati reports. The Northern Senators led by their leader, Senator Abdul Nengi, says they are in the state to commiserate with the government and plateau people over the Christmas Eve attacks. The Senator called for a thorough investigation into the remote and immediate cause of the attacks. We must draw our sentiments attached to ourselves on the ethnic origin and deal decisively with those who are causing this crisis. Governor Mutfan, who described the visit as comforting and encouraging, says he has vowed that these acts will not continue in his time, as he assures the people that he is eager and determined to take plateau states out of the woods and begin to chart the way of progress and developments. Where do we go from here? What future do we want to bequeath to those coming behind us? The governor who thanked President Bola Ahmed Tinubu for the prompt response says it is time to unveil the curtain and unmask those behind this type of attacks. He assures the visitors that he will remain committed to building bridges among different faiths as he urged the lawmakers to consider the states in the budget to resettle those displaced. In just grace, equity, and the news. The federal government says it is mobilizing resources for massive investment in rice production this dry season. Minister of Agriculture and Food Security Abbekari says it is set to release 10 integrated rice mills to investors towards meeting the country's demand of the produce. Musaba Baliu tells us more. The federal government has awarded contracts for the establishment of 10 integrated rice mills in 10 states and the Federal Capital Territory. This one located in Sule Janeja State with the capacity of milling 200 tons per day has been completed and currently been test run. And the Minister of Agriculture and Food Security is here for inspection. He was told that the idea of the establishment of the mills was conceived with a view to encouraging investors to invest in the government's self-sufficiency project. The sustainability of this product, pro project is production. Yes. Yes. Once you produce paddy, yes. this project will be alive. Yes. So I think that is one key that yes. we, need to, we, need, we need to make double our efforts and we need to produce more. And here are Chinese investors taking ministers around their farm facility located in Bwari Area Council. The farm under the auspices of China Aid Nigeria Agricultural Technology, serves as a demonstration, research and exhibition center. The minister picked interest in the new rice seed variety produced by the Chinese capable of producing eight tons per hectare. We also made to understand that that Gawa uh, R1 variety is sought after by, by our farmers. The farm is also expected to assist in extension services and other innovation in farming. From Bwari Area Council, Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. Zamfar State Governor Dauda Lawal has approved the payment of 30% of basic salary as an end of the year bonus to all the state civil servants. This is contained in a circular issued to government ministries, departments, and agencies by the state head of service, Abubakar Aliyu Liman. 
the circular the, the gesture is part of the present administration's drive to continually improve the welfare of the state teaming workforce for enhanced productivity. The circular urges the state civil servants to reciprocate the gesture by being more committed to work and to support the ongoing reforms in line with the rescue mission of Governor Dauda Lawala. The federal government has vowed to continue to create an enabling environment for businesses to thrive by issuing executive orders 001, 002 and 003 to ministries, extra ministerial departments and agencies to promote transparency and efficiency in the Nigerian business environment. The Permanent Secretary Special Duties Office of Head of Civil Service of the Federation, Farouk Yusuf Yabu, said this at a workshop on the implementation of executive orders for heads of cervical units nationwide in Abuja. Hamman Jebani reports. The executive order 001 is for the promotion of transparency, default approval, port operations, registration of businesses, entry and experience of visitors and travelers, promote global best practices, reduce costs and reduce time for completion of regulatory processes. While Executive Order 002 and 003 give Made in Nigeria product preference in the procurement of certain items and at least 40% of the procurement expenditure on these items in all MDAs of the federal government should be locally manufactured goods or local service provider. Permanent Secretary, Special Duties Office, Office of the Head of the Civil Service of the Federation, Farouk Yusuf Yabu, who was represented, says, the implementation of these orders is of strategic importance to the federal government as the country seeks to create an enabling environment for businesses, promote transparency and efficiency, promote economic diversification, promote local industries, and stimulate the growth of the national economy. He said MDAs were directed to adhere strictly to the provisions of the executive orders as contained in the guidelines for implementation and that the other specify various deadlines for implementation. In order to drive the implementation and operationalization of the Executive Order 001 by ministries, the head of the Civil Service of the Federation and Secretary of the Government of the Federation were directed to organize training workshops for various cadres, starting with the head of agencies and MDAs that are yet to comply are expected to do so. Hamman Jabani, NTA News. Various activities are involved in the celebration of any festivity. This is evident as Nigerians prepare for the new year 2024. Kayodo Oladotu visited some motor parks and markets within Oshobu metropolis and brought a restoration report. Ace to the year 2024, travelers throng to various motor parks across Oshobu metropolis for movement to different destinations. Driving to Ibadan. Well, before we take it to 1,000, there are 1,500, but now it's 2,500. Motorists claimed that the transport fare is not on the high side, despite the mood of festivity. There are no chance for us to increase our price, because everybody knows that there's no much enough money. A visit to markets showed patronage of consumables with complaints of low cash in circulation. Tiny, small, small, because there's no money. With lots of vehicular movement before and during the festival, concerned authority appealed to road users to obey traffic rules and regulations. About 1,225 men have been mobilized, both our regular and special marshal, to ensure that there are no gridlocks all over Ocean State. It is therefore expected for all and sundry to celebrate the New Year holiday in moderation. In Oshobo, Kado Ladoshu, NTA News. Femi Afari Ogun is standing by in Oshogo to give us an update on preparations for the new year in Oshogo, the Oshun state capital. Hello. Good afternoon. Welcome to Oshogo. Uh, in the last one week, Oshogo, the Oshun state capital, has witnessed influx of human and vehicular movements. Unlike some state capitals, uh, the traffic is not heavy here in Oshogo. But there are lots of activities at motor parks. However, an unfortunate incident happened on Tuesday where nine lives were lost in an accident that occurred along the Kiron Ilaudo Kwara Boundary Highway. The PRO of FRSC or Show State Sector Command, Agnes Ogunbe News, I spoke to not quite long, uh, said they are intensifying campaign against overspeeding during this period. 
there has been a relative peace here in the state capital as the police uh, vehicles are patrolling everywhere i saw some at strategic junctions before coming to this place okay Femi. thank you very much oh uh, what more can you say about you, the hello Femi. hello hello can you tell us more about the happenings i can hear you. Uh, uh, on, on my way here, yeah, I passed uh, some markets and people were making preparation for the uh, New Year celebration. But unlike the Christmas period, the turnout is, uh, is low. Uh, it, it has also been a tradition of the state government to hold a crossover program at the nice Mandela Freedom Park, about 100 meters from where I am here. But up to now, it is not sure whether the program we hope, as residents anticipate uh, the New Year's festivities, the state government says they are working towards fostering a secure and enjoyable environment for the people of Osho in the year 2024. Thank you very much, Femi. We now Thank take you. a break. Nationwide continues shortly. The Nigerian police has assured Lagos residents that it will not relent in ensuring the safety of lives and property even as they prepare for the new year 2024. This assurance came from the Lagos State Commissioner of Police, Adeguki Fayo Adi, while outlining security measures for the new year. Larry Miller reports. Lagos residents were speaking about security situation in their areas during the yellow tide expressed satisfaction at the level of security presence in the metropolis. Throughout the festivities, there's no problem with the security. They have been friendly and cooperative. There is a peaceful atmosphere. There's no any, uh, what I can call, any insecurity there. People are indoor. The, secu uh, the places are very calm. I can say we are, sec we are fairly secured because if you make complaints to them, they will respond. The Commission of Police, in its assessment of the calm situation experienced in the city so far, said it is due to the new techniques put in place by the Nigerian police. We occupy the uh, public space and make sure that no crime is committed. That is what we are put in place. Our men are on ground, they are everywhere, patrol is going on. And uh, we will not only work in the day, we work more in the night. So this we are going to sustain till the new year. We want zero tolerance to crime. And uh, uh, officers and men of this command are up to the task. He assured Lagos residents that the status quo will be maintained as they go into the new year. In Lagos, Larry Bilayi, NTA News. Lagosians have continued to lament the unavailability of cash in automated telemachines and inside the banking halls, with uh, withdrawals limited to 20,000 naira across the counters. Lineneke went around town and came back with this report. Preparations to usher in the new year is in top gear with business activities, especially trading now at its peak. Cash transactions still remain relevant in the nation's business activities, especially among the SMEs and the unbanked population. However, the physical legal tender, which is a medium of exchange to fast-track transactions, seem to be the major impediment to business activities. Customers are experiencing difficulties in accessing cash at the ATMs, those who are lucky to receive cash go through a tedious process and are only eligible to receive 20,000 in most cases. So as soon as I was only able to withdraw 5k because I was in um, another ATM, we joined from another bank. But when I got here today as a customer, I was surprised when I could withdraw more than 5k with another ATM card. So they said the security are telling me um, that um, their bank pays up to 10k and you can even um, withdraw more than, more than one transaction. I don't prefer cashless, because sometimes network issue. Customer will want to pay with car, but because of no car, they will transfer and you start waiting and all that. In business, it's affecting us. Some Lagosians say 
using the point of sale machine POS, which requires money to buy money, is the last resort. And this is worsened by poor network encountered while using bank applications. And no business now. Nobody has cash. Transfer, 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 transfer. And in bank, banking, internet, transfer is, uh, is having an issue. If you might transfer, your supplier might not get the alert, and you, but you might have delay in supply. As the clock winds down, the expectation of all is that the situation will subside and cash will be available for memorable celebrations. In Lagos, Lynn Lenake, NTA News. That's the size of our package from Lagos. Nationwide continues with Amina in Abuja. Please stay. Michael, arrangements are on to replace the obsolete senior secondary education curriculum with one that will give students opportunities to acquire the relevant trade and entrepreneurship skills needed for poverty eradication, job creation, and wealth generation. Ablai Musa Suleja reports. 12 years since the introduction of the current senior secondary education curriculum, Undoubtedly, times have changed, new ideas have emerged, and new technologies developed. National Education Research Development Council collected and harmonized views and input of stakeholders, including students, to come up with guidelines and framework for the review of the senior secondary school education curriculum, and organized a two-day stakeholders workshop to validate the draft guidelines. To ensure that our students, the society, and the country guests or provide the best training and the appropriate qualification for people's primary, secondary, and then quality graduates at the tertiary level. The only way we can effectively respond to these changes and give our children the chance to develop new skills and competencies for thriving in the contemporary world is to give them the necessary learning opportunities through curriculum reform. These processes were carried out to instill the 21st century skills in students that will focus more on what the learners can do rather than what they can know. Abdullahi Musa Suleja, NTA News. Similarly, University of Abuja is establishing a fund where the money generated will be given to students after graduation to quench their thirst of looking for business startup instead of lurking around banks for loans. This is coming from the Vice Chancellor, Professor Abdul Rashid Naalla, at the fourth and fifth Student Employment Scheme Award, with slogan Work, Learn and Excel, organized by Center for Students Mentoring and Employment, CSSME of the University. The scheme was introduced to give temporary employment to students to work during their off study period and earn some stipends. This is done to prepare them to be good businessmen and women after graduation. In the same center, Universal Basic Education Commission. Their 2023 came with aspirations, especially in the education sector, as stakeholders and experts have effortlessly supported the sector in achieving the sole aim of giving every Nigerian child quality, accessible and affordable education. Christiana Akande from the Education Desk takes us through the achievements of the education sector, especially the National University Commission and the Universal Basic Education Arm of the Ministry of Education. Jubik has made notable strides in 2023. Notably, is the increased number of children enrolled in primary school from 9.5 million to 12.5 million. This is a significant achievement as it means that more children are getting access to education. Similarly, the Commission has also raised the literacy rate of the country from 55% to 60%. This means that more people are able to read and write. Another feat is the establishment and refurbishing of over 2,000 primary schools across Nigeria. In the year under review, the number of smart schools and digital centers established has increased to 200. These schools and centers have access to high-speed internet and modern equipment such as computers, tablets, and interactive whiteboards. They also offer digital resources 
such as e-books and online courses. About 5,000 teachers have also enjoyed training on the use of technology in the classroom. We should constantly demonstrate the awareness that teachers and learners are important inputs in any educational endeavor and priorities must be given to them if the goals and objectives of the system must be achieved. The National Universities Commission, NUC, on its part, has also made some significant strides in 2023, such as the establishment of NUC e-learning portal, which provides access to over 1,000 online courses for university students, and NUC e-library that provides access to over 10,000 online courses, as well as the creation of an online examination system which allows for online examinations to be conducted. NUC also provides a number of new higher institutions in 2023. This includes the establishment of five new federal universities, two new private universities, and four new polytechnics. These new institutions will help to increase the access to higher education and provide more opportunities for students. Education is on the concurrent list. And therefore, uh, federal government, state government, and uh, uh, private spirited individuals are at liberty uh, to undertake uh, university enterprises. Observers in the sector loaded this effort call for more and implementation of some robust policies that will impact the sector greatly. In Abuja, Christiana Akonde, NC News. There is steady progress in the fight against banditry in Sokoto State with the commencement of the recruitment of 1,950 volunteers in the State Community Guard Corps. The state government is also procuring 30 operational vehicles and 700 motorcycles for the civilian guards to facilitate their movement across the state to combat activities of criminals. Bashir Ibrahim Nababa reports. Establishment of the civilian guards in Sokoto State is in fulfillment of the pact signed by the Northwest governors to jointly fight banditry and criminality ravaging the region. A list of 2,600 eligible persons mobilized from the 13 affected local government areas of Sokoto State were presented at the last state executive council meeting. The government has now approved 1,950 to be enlisted in the community guards corps and are to undergo two-month training. A consultant has been engaged to oversee their training, feeding, allowances, duration, and ensure health care of the recruits. Governor Ahmed Aliu has briefed security chiefs in the state on the government's preparations towards establishment of the security outfit. This is part of our custom premises that ensuring security of lives and the property of the states. The governor maintains that the guards are only to complement efforts of the security agencies in restoration of peace in the state. From Sokoto, Bashir Ibrahim Nababa, NTA News. We now join Aliu Mohammed Kawai, who is standing by at the government house, Sokoto, where a lot has happened in the last two to three days in relation to approval of the recruitment and subsequent signing into law a bill establishing the state community guard corps, as well as handing over of dozens of rescued kidnapped victims by security operatives. Hello, Aliu. Hello, Aliu. Hello, good afternoon. What is the situation right now? Hello, good afternoon. Afternoon. What is the situation right now? Hello? The situation right now... Hello, I can hear you. The screening exercise... Yes. Can I go ahead? The screening exercise of, of the community guards is, is currently going on at... NYC orientation camp, Wamako. They are going to screen the 2,600 uh, mobilized volunteers. Then after screening, 1,950 will be selected. Then that number will undergo two weeks, uh, sorry, four, two month training. After that, uh, they are going to have 30 operational vehicles to be procured by the state government and 70, 700 
motorcycles during the you know, during the signing into law of the uh, law that established the community guards, the state governor assured that the security guards are not rival to the existing security agencies, but complementary to the current security out out outfit in the state, and they are going to serve as a very important role in the fight against banditry in the eastern and northern parts of the state that are ravaged by the current security situation. So how is the community reacting to this situation, this new development? How are they taking it? Of, okay. of course, people have mixed reaction about this development. But majority are in support of this, uh, uh, are in support of this uh, community guard school. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ali. Traffic conditions along the Abuja Lokuja Okeni Highway are currently favorable, with a notable absence of the typical gridlocks that tend to define this major route during this season. Solomon Ayedehim examines the factors contributing to the smooth flow of traffic on the highway in this report. The festive holiday season keeps the nation's highways bustling with activity as travelers embark on journeys across the country to celebrate the Yuletide with their loved ones. Notably absent this year is the typical congestion that plagues the Abuja Lokoja Okene Highway during festive periods. While some attributed the current smooth flow of traffic to a decreased volume of vehicles influenced by the prevailing economic situation, others commend the collaborative efforts of traffic management officials, particularly the Federal Road Safety Corps, working in conjunction with other security agencies. Special mention is made of the ongoing Ember Month activities and the Federal Road Safety Corps' introduction of a mobile traffic court at Banda Community on the highway to address traffic offenses. Compared to the, the former celebration we have in the past, that the road is always jam-packed and uh, blocked, this time around the road has been free. In addition to implementing palliatives or some deteriorated sections of the highway, the Federal Minister of Works has intensified efforts to complete the dualization of the local Jaukene stretch. This maintaining while you do the road is uh, better. It don't help. It don't help you people. It's been a little bit maintained and is a little bit fair, and the hold up is not that there again. As the new year approaches, and with the anticipation of travelers returning to their bases in the next few days, there is a collective hope that the positive outcomes of the current traffic management measures will endure in Lokoja. Solomon Ayedehi, NTA News. We now join Amir Degree Studios for more stories on Nationwide. Hello, Abu Bakr. Nice to see you, Amina, and thanks for joining us here. Let's begin with um, some legislative matters. Borno State House of Assembly has passed the 2024 appropriation bill of over 358.7 billion naira, with the increase of 18.1 billion from the initial sum of 300 and 40.6 billion naira submitted by the governor. Speaker Abdul Karim Lawan has also received executive requests seeking confirmation of 20 special advisors and establishment of Borno State Great Green Wall and State Information Communication Technology Agencies. Here is Kegama Mustafa with the rest of the story. Chairman House Committee on Appropriation and Member representing Kaga. Bukar Ali Bebenishek, at while submitting the report, said the committee had summoned various ministries, departments, and agencies in order to ensure that the provisional policies and programs of government are reflected. The RRR has to do something, particularly to build places for those IDPs to accommodate at their respective places. Leader of the House, Dige Mohamed, and member representing Kala Balge, of a motion that the House resolved into Committee of Hall to consider the report and was seconded by Ibrahim Musa in Wakubo, member representing Shani. The resolution of Committee of Hall was announced by the Speaker Abdul Karim Dawan. The additional increment for the various ministries 18 billion 112 million 
310,000. The speaker said the 2024 budget, which was earlier submitted by the governor, was 340.6 billion, while the House has deemed it necessary to increase 18.1 billion to make it 358.7 billion for the 2024 budget. The speaker has read her executive request seeking confirmation of 20 additional special advisors. Leader of the House moved for adoption and was seconded by Usman Lawan Moruma, member representing Marble constituency. The bills of establishment of our North State Great Green Wall and State Information Communication Technology Agencies for the subsequent sitting. In Meduguri, Aigama Mustafa, NTA News. Away from legislative affairs now, to tell you that Borno State Government has set up a committee to review all books used in both public and private schools to ensure conformity with moral, cultural and religious values of the society. Tina Toru was there for NTA News. In Borno State, after two months of rigorous work, the committee finally presented its report. The Commissioner, Lauren Abawakilbe, who commended the committee for a job well done, insists that only textbooks recommended by the committee will be used by both public and private schools. We reviewed every book that is listed in this and I'm sure they have done a thorough job and any book that is going to be in use in our schools will no longer have harmful contents. Members of the committee admit that though the tax was a tedious one, it is worth every effort put into it. Selected the best one that can be good for the culture, norm, and the, 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 of the society of Borono. We try to make sure that things that have to do with religion and uh, is not in compliance with our norms are all expunged. The book review committee's mandate in ensuring sound teachings that respect cultural and religious values for the holistic development of school children in Borno was successfully carried out. In Meduguri, Tina Toru, NTA News. If you're just joining us, you're on to Nationwide on the Nigerian Television Authority. We have more reports for you from our Ibadan Network Center, but that will be right after this break. Hello and welcome to Ibadan. Southwest governors are to support the family of Arakunwe Rotimi Akiridulu in giving a befitting burial to the former Ondo State Governor. The governor stated these during a condolence visit to the family of the late governor in Ibado. Lukman Hassan has the report. The governors who described the late Ondo State Governor Rotimi Akiridulu as a dogged fighter noted that his contributions to the development of southwestern Nigeria will not be forgotten. The governors comprise Ogu, Oshu, Ekiti, and the Deputy Governor of Oyo State who expressed their sadness over the demise, added that the late governor lived a life that has positively touched the life of many. Without a doubt, we are all still in a state of shock and disbelief. Uh, a position that he held, he led, very courageously, very fearlessly, um, was a learned senior advocate. Sympathizers from within and outside of your state have continued to pay their condolences to the private residence of the late Ondo State Governor. However, journalists were barred by the family from covering the condolences in Ibadan. Lokman Hassan, NTA News. And Quranic education, particularly its memorization, has been described as one of the veritable religious platforms to curb moral decadence and social vices among youths in the society. Therefore, the need for government support at all levels has been emphasized by Islamic clerics at a gathering in Ibadan, the Oyo state capital. Adebola Agbaje has to report. Rannic education, an informal form of acquiring knowledge, is in stages from tender age to adulthood, which includes recitation and memorization. It has been observed that Quranic education centers are springing up across the Baden city as their students are from different parts of the country. Parts of religious aspects of the teaching 
Quranic education inculcates moral values as well as discipline in individuals for a better society. We need a lot of spiritual diets for the children of today because we have a lot of the tools of shaitan that is all around these children to lead them astray. Charity begins at home. If we are able to educate them in a way that is actually expected, the society will become better. As Colonel Watana called our attention to the need to be wary and be protective of ourselves, especially when we find ourselves in an environment that is corrupted with a lot of wrong doings. Quran memorization is believed by the adherents to be a brain booster, also encompasses ways of life on us and beyond. Institute have taught me a lot of things, both morally and mentally. I'm coming from the north to the western part of Nigeria, was not an easy decision. And memorizing at first two was not easy. Quran memorization takes at least between the minimum of six months to 18 months to memorize successfully, while other aspects of the education take longer duration. From Ibadan, Adebola Agbaje, NCA News. And that's it in Ibadan. Nationwide continues with Amina in Abuja. Ken, the year 2023 was a journey of endurance and hope for the government and Nigerian workers. This was occasioned by long-term economic measures put in place by the federal government. Our labor correspondent Joseph Olson reports that dialogue and collective bargaining was key in resolving much of industrial disputes that followed implementation of the measures. The election of Bola Tinubu as Nigeria's new president and Joseph Ajero as new president of the Nigerian Labor Congress, both in February 2023, meant the labor industry will be selling on a new ship. <laughs> Many had high expectations that both leadership will drive measures that will change the fortune of the country and workers who were already experiencing economic hardship with a drop in the global price of oil and roll over impact of COVID-19, among other issues triggering high inflation. Make sure that our refineries work and we refine uh, enough petroleum products for our national consumption. A leadership and now see that is more vocal, that is more result oriented. We have moved from the era of training people for three days, four days, giving them 20, 20,000, 50, 50,000, the next time you come they are back. So we have now graduated to sustainable training where you make sure that people are trained based on what they want to do. But this major declaration, subsidy is gone made by President Bola Tinubu after his May 29th inauguration simply indicated Nigerians will embark on an enduring long journey. Immediately the announcement went on air. Some petroleum distribution stations shut down. Others hiked prices from 300 above, while inflation continued to surge, standing currently above 28 percent. Inasmuch as the organized labor agreed with government to save the subsidy funds and invest in sustainable social protection projects. It wanted immediate release of palliatives to help citizens cope with hardship occasioned by the removal of petrol subsidy. An agitated labor force threatened industrial action over high cost of living that launched a series of engagements between representatives of the government and that of the organized labor. Eventually, the planned nationwide strike scheduled for October 3rd by the Nigerian workers was suspended. Government commands payment of the wage award, but inconsistency implementation is giving the workers another concern. So we call on government to remove all the bottlenecks that have been experienced today regarding the wage award and to continuously pay this sum. Meanwhile, the federal government gave states and the FCT 5 billion naira each to implement palliatives and has launched some CNG buses. Despite amicable resolutions of much of the industrial disputes in 2023, the year still had a downside with Nigerian workers embarking on a nationwide strike December 14th after the maltreatment of the NLC President Joseph Ajiro in Imo State at a planned protest over what the leadership of the organized labor described as 
violation of workers' rights in the state. The Minister of Labor and Employment and the National Security Advisor engaged the leadership of the NLC and TUC to convey government apology over the incident, as government promised to prosecute perpetrators of the act and meet other demands of labor. The result was calling off the strike action after two days. There is no doubt 2023 had been a tough year for both the Nigerian worker and government. But all are hoping 2024 sees fruits of the long-term economic measures the government dared to implement in Abuja, Joseph Utsen, NTA News. And now for updates and stories making headlines in the sporting world, let's join Olumide Oguntola on Sports Update. And that's it on Nationwide. Thanks for joining us.